Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 632. Today I'm gonna to talk about brass. <laughs> There's two versions that you can see in my hands here. First you have Brass Lancashire, which is kind of a remake of the old edition of Brass, which is uh, more than 10 years old, I believe. And then you got here Brass Birmingham, which is a completely new game. It's not an expansion for this one or vice versa. So I'm gonna feature mostly Brass Birmingham because that's kind of the new kid on the block kind of idea. Uh, but I will definitely refer to them in contrast and tell you a little bit about what's different, what's new, you know, what makes them kind of different from each other and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so the original brass is a relatively heavy weight euro where you're uh, building up various different uh, shipping industries and sort of ancillary industries to kind of support that. And then uh, it's all driven by card play. So you have this hand of cards that sort of restricts and maybe molds your actions a little bit. And so that's carried through in both of these new versions. Now there's some different industries in Birmingham as opposed to what's featured in Lancashire, uh, but it's very much a card driven heavy Euro. So that's a interesting sort of mashup that you don't really see a lot of even today. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm gonna give you sort of a brief kind of idea of how the game works. I don't want to mire in all the details because frankly, even though I'm saying it's heavy and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty straightforward. There are some sort of idiosyncrasies which I'll try to highlight. Uh, and But uh, I would just want to recommend uh, Roddy Smith did a watch it played of the new version. Uh, and that's a pretty exhaustive uh, rules overview. And uh, the rules themselves aren't bad at all to learn. Uh, just to kind of give you that kind of comment up front. Uh, definitely, if you have played the original Brass, uh, this one obviously will be very easy to pick up. It's basically the same game. There's some minor changes to some certain things and uh, some adjustments based on player count that the original didn't have. And then this one, if you've played the original or Lancashire, uh, then you'll be able to pick this up. Now, this is definitely the more complex of the two. There's, I think, two more basically industries that you can manipulate uh, as opposed to this one. Uh, so let's jump in and look at how it works a little bit, and then I will come back here and give you my thoughts. Okay, so here you can see the board. I've got some of the different uh, iron and coal tokens set up over there. You can see here, if I zoom in, there are various cities. They're connected by either rivers and railroads, or sometimes they're just connected by one or the other. So this one you can see is just connected by a river. And then they have various different industries that you can develop and build there. So players, like I said, are gonna get a hand of cards. So for example, I have this one here, Dudley. And when I play this card as some one of my actions, I can go ahead and do uh, a building in this Dudley area so I could build either the iron or the coal industry. So that's now, one type of card that you can play, one of a location. The other type you can play are these industry cards here. And you can see here the icon in the upper corners there. So if I wanted to play this, then I could theoretically build a coal uh, plant there. Now the interesting thing about this, kind of the main takeaway is, if you have a location card, then you can build there no matter what. If you play one of these cards to build a specific type of industry, then you have to be connected to it. And you can be connected to it in a few different ways. Most of the time, you're gonna be connected to it through these canal tokens here. You can see these are actually double-sided. So in the first sort of half of the game, you'll be building canals. In the other half, then you'd be building rail lines there. So let's say we built that canal there. And maybe prior to that, we had built this manufacturing industry here. So we can only build a canal adjacent to a spot where we either have an industry or we had already connected into there from some other spot. So let's say we had come in here, we'd built some industries up there and then built some canals coming down here. And then now this will allow us then to access this with this card. Where again, if we play the specific location, we can kind of break that rule and it doesn't matter if we're connected to it. So that's kind of the general gist of that rule uh, in terms of how these different cards work. Now you are gonna be also discarding these cards to take other actions. So for example, if you wanna take a loan, you can discard any card you want. If you want to build a canal or a rail in the second phase of the game, then you also will be discarding a card. There's a develop action, which I'll talk about in just a minute. To do that, you've got to discard a card. If you want to pass, then you must also discard a card. So everything you're going to be doing, you're going to be discarding cards. So in the first round of the game, everybody gets one action. So you just discard one card and do whatever it's for. Uh, in future rounds, you're going to be doing two actions per turn. 
Now it's worth noting that the uh, first time you do a build action, so maybe the first action on, uh, of your whole game, you could go ahead and do this anywhere you want because you won't have any pieces on the board. In that case, if you have nothing on the board, then you can go ahead and kind of break that rule and build a coal industry uh, wherever it's convenient. And then at the end of your turn, you're gonna draw two more cards back up into your hand limit of eight and then keep going. Now you're gonna be playing through this deck of cards. Now once this deck runs out, players are gonna to continue to play cards from their hand until everybody has played all of the cards. And then that's when we go into phase two. So in phase one, the first trip through this deck, in that case, you're only gonna be building uh, canals here. Once you go through the deck, you're gonna be in phase two. All the canals and the level one technologies, so you can see this one here, this level one manufacturing building, you can see the level right there, level one. Then all of those are gonna get wiped off the board. At that point, you're only gonna be building railways and then only level two and higher technologies. So one other aspect of the buildings I wanna show you here is when you build them, they're gonna be with this kind of face up side. And then each of the different building types is gonna have some kind of event or reason that they're gonna trigger. In this case, it's a manufacturing building. And when you ship this, which you can also discard a card to take a ship action. And when you do a ship action, you can ship multiple of your industries on the board, not just one per card. Then you're gonna flip it over. Now you can see here, this requires you to actually have a barrel uh, that you can access a barrel of beer in this case. And so I'll explain a little bit about that in, in a minute, I don't wanna get too much detail. But if you've got a barrel access to a barrel, then you can flip that if you do the ship action. And then at this point, you're gonna see a couple of things. Now these two little kind of rail icons there, that means these are gonna score points for anybody that's connected to the city. It's gonna be two points, uh, basically for each rail that you have connected to the city. It's gonna immediately increase your income by five, and then at the end of the round, once we go through the deck, it's gonna give you three points. And all of the buildings have this kind of thing. So over here, you can see each player's got a victory point uh, tracker, and then they also have an income tracker. Now, as you uh, score the different buildings, in this case, you can see that your income there is gonna go up by five. So this would actually move up five spots. And then every turn, so every time you do your two actions, you're gonna get more and more income as you go. So these are gonna help you, uh, you know, collect income to spend money to actually pay for the buildings and so on. And then at a certain point, you're gonna kind of pivot away from the money collection because your income should be pretty high, depending on how you're playing the game. Uh, and then you're gonna try to go after some of the points that maybe don't give you as much income, but they give you more points and that kind of thing. Now, another cool idiosyncrasy, and everything that I'm talking about so far is in both games, except for the whole barrel uh, concept. Uh, these barrels that are required for shipping and some other things, that does not exist in Lancashire. This is just Birmingham now. Uh, but everything else is, is pretty much uh, the same. <laughs> so one other similarity between the two games is you have these little uh, chits here in your player color. So as you spend money, uh, you're gonna put that actually on these little faces here, and then you're gonna reorganize these based on whoever spent the least will be going first, and so on. Now the money in this edition is really cool. This is the deluxe edition that I'm showing you here. And if you see here, each of the editions comes with this little rack of poker chips, which are really nice. You can see you got ones, fives, tens, twenties, and so on. The kind of the basic retail version comes with cardboard chits. So that's kind of one of the main feature differences there. And I believe, I'm 90% sure that if you want this edition here with these cool poker chips, you can only buy those directly from uh, the publisher on their website. So here we can see a player board, and these are all of the different levels of different industries that exist in the game. And you can see like here we have uh, the breweries here. This is a level one. There's a couple of these. And then it's a, it's a little bit of a bear of a setup. It's not too bad once you've done it. So you got level one, two, three, four of all these, and this goes from one to eight all the way up here. And you can see there are multiples of some of these and single ones of the others. So you spend a little bit of time kind of organizing these on your player board. Now the Lancashire board, that's gonna give you a quick look at. You can see this one's a little bit simpler. One, two, three, four, five kind of different uh, technologies and industries there. This says one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, but there's a couple of different ones that you can ship and things like that. So it's a little bit um, more complex here, especially once you add the barrels and stuff like that. But one of the actions I talked about was develop. Again, you can discard a card from your hand to develop, and that simply is discarding one or two 
of one of your low level industries and you can do that from separate industries so i could do one uh, brewery and then one cotton mill and so on uh, and then as you do that you're going to then sort of like level up your technologies and get quicker access you don't actually have to build some of these low level ones if you don't want sometimes it's good to do uh, building them and sometimes it's better to develop and get access to the higher ones quicker now some of these however you can't do so in this one you can see this little uh, light bulb with the cross this means you cannot actually develop you have to actually build uh, this particular uh, industry there now to do the develop you're going to need iron and in some cases if we look at some of these buildings here if we zoom in when you actually build them not only is there a monetary cost there's also a cost of coal or in this case iron and it's kind of funny because iron needs coal and coal needs iron. And so you need to have access uh, to those materials. And unlike most games, you don't go buy and sell coal and iron and then kind of convert and churn that into buildings, which turns into victory points. The way that you get that is one of the unique things about uh, both editions uh, of this game of brass. So let's say, for example, we wanted to build all things being equal uh, this coal factory here. Now we want to build that. Now this costs us $8 and an iron. So we need to get access to iron. Now you can see when you build these different industries here. So this one actually will come with four coal on it. So we're going to put three, four on there. And then let's say another player uh, on a previous turn had built this ironworks here. This is a level three ironworks. And they had some iron on there like that. So having built this, forget about the adjacency of the railroads and everything. Let's just kind of abstractly look at this scenario. Then this costs an iron. So I need to get iron from somewhere. So I can take iron anywhere on the board. Now, if it was on my building, I'd prefer to take that. But let's say there's, I haven't built any iron. Uh, then I would take an iron from somebody else and just take it off and spend it and throw it into the discard pile. Now, if this building did not exist, then I would have to buy it here from the market. And you can see as stuff gets kind of bought up, then it's gonna get more and more and more expensive. Okay, that's great. But the other player, in this case, the purple player, they want to have their iron taken. They don't care if they're helping you build this because once you clear a building of iron, that's when this particular thing flips over. So the different goods and manufacturing and the beer bells and stuff, you wanna do a shipping action to ship those to different ports and then those will flip over. But these, you want to sort of build supporting industries to kind of support all these other kind of industries that are around. So in this case, once that last iron good is taken off, they're going to get two income. It'll become a scoring building. And then again, they'll get seven points themselves. And it works a similar here way with the coal. Once the coal flips over or coal gets dispersed, then the coal will flip over. Now, the interesting thing about iron is you can just take it from anywhere. You don't have to be connected to it. However, coal, if you require coal, which this building does, this ironworks requires coal, then you have to be connected to a coal source to get it. So in this case, let's say it was reversed. This had been built previously. Maybe some of these have been already removed. And I want to build this and it requires iron. Well, I can't build it in this context because it's not connected to any coal source. So if I had a railroad or a canal here, then what would happen is I would take this and drag it along and then grab it. Now this could be far away. It doesn't have to go over my rails and go over other players rails. You just have to connect to it somehow, or you have to connect to a distant port. So we'll just kind of zoom over here. You can see these, there's a couple of spots like this. You can see these are little scoring icons. So you are going to score points if you connect to it with your rail or canal. And it has this little symbol here, which means you can get coal out of it. So the coal here though, comes from the market here. And again, you've got to pay the cost. Now, the other interesting aspect here is if I build and ironworks, and let's say some iron had been bought off there, then immediately as I build it, these will start to go and populate the market, and you're gonna get this money back. So if I built this, I would get three, six, eight, ten bucks right away for building it, and then of course there's no iron on this, and that would flip over. So again, the iron doesn't have to be connected, but when I built a coal, if these were cleared off, it's the same idea, but I have to be able to draw a line back to a faraway port and then load this up and it only happens at the time i build it so if you connect to it later they don't start coming off automatically it's got to be empty at the time of the build so just this interlocking kind of mechanism here is very very interesting so for example if i wanted to build this ceramic factory here now this costs you 17 dollars. it's expensive and an iron 
So if I want to get into that, so what happens when I flip that over? That's really good because it gives me five income, which early in the game is a lot. It's good. And 10 points, which is a lot of points for early, early in the game. So these supporting industries here, uh, the coal and the iron, and to a certain degree, uh, the breweries here uh, are very, very key to getting uh, an access to some of the more larger point scoring things. And then players are always using each other's buildings and things. Now let's talk quickly about the barrels and then I'll kind of leave it. So here you can see uh, shipping uh, locations here, Oxford, and then over here, Gloucester. Okay, so to ship here, you need to have some kind of uh, canals or railroads going into there. It doesn't have to be yours. You just have to be able to draw a line contiguously to there from whatever uh, manufacturing or cotton type of thing that you're shipping. And then you can see this port here, it'll take manufacturing or it'll take anything. So, well, not almost anything. So it'll take the manufacturing, the cotton and the ceramics, whereas this one is just ceramics. And this one actually is inactive because you can see actually shuffle these up and then mix them around. And it depends on the player count, uh, which ones you'll be using. So in a two player game, you won't add this one to the shuffle. And you can also see here, these locations will vary. These are used in any player count. Uh, whereas these here are also using any player count, but there's some on here that, uh, you know, aren't used. So the sort of place that you can ship certain goods is going to change from game to game. Now, most stuff, not everything is going to require you have access to a beer barrel to ship to it. Now at the start of each round, so each phase, so in the canal phase and then in the rail phase, the places that have a valid shipping icon, we're going to get seated with a barrel. So you don't really need to have access to a barrel on the board. You can just go ahead and use this one. And then it also will give you a free uh, bonus action as well. So if, when you do that, you can get a free develop or free two income. Now, later on, there are going to be barrels out here on the board at different locations. So if we go up here, if somebody had built a brewery there and you could draw a line back to them, then you can take that barrel off. And again, you're going to then flip the brewery and for that player and flip that over. Now, if it's your own brewery, you don't actually have to be connected to it. You can just take it from anywhere on the board. So that's kind of interesting. So again, it's another kind of supporting industry to support the kind of the workers and having like pubs for them to visit as they do things and get the goods down uh, the canals or down the rails. So really there's a couple of other kind of details and things, frankly, but that is really uh, the gist of the game. As heavy it is, it's not that heavy on the complexity side. Certainly it's heavy in terms of what do I do? What's the right move? All that kind of good stuff. Okay, so that was Brass, mostly Birmingham, but a little bit talk of uh, Lancashire in there. Uh, so I have my three pillars. I've played uh, three and four players. I've not tried two players. I have played two player Lancashire and that actually worked very, very well. They both have similar rules. It's kind of an update for Lancashire and of course new for Birmingham where you take out certain cards out of the deck you sort of isolate certain locations that you can still get to, but there's no location cards for those. Uh, you can still, if you play, you know, the different industry cards to branch out, you can still get to some of those locations. It's just much harder. So the map is somewhat shrunk down for two and three players. And there's a couple other little kind of reminder things in like Assure that are, are different, which I didn't talk about. Um, but the game scales really well. Uh, like I said, I haven't played Birmingham with two, but I played Lancashire with two and it worked very, very well. There's actually a board game geek variant that floated around for years that they also include in the rule book there, which I've never tried. Uh, so it's very nice and refreshing to know that brass now works uh, very well, I think, at least with Lancashire, for two players. Uh, because typically it was a three and four player game and that's all it was, which was no problem. That's just how it is but it's nice to be able to kind of get a little bit of that same experience at the two player count. I will say in terms of the player count, I think the best player count is certainly four, although I don't really begrudge the two or the three player count. Uh, you're still gonna be interacting with the other players at the different player counts. You know, you're still gonna be kind of uh, subsisting each other with, I don't even know if that's the right word, <laughs> with the different industries and you know, playing off of each other that way with the iron and the coal and the beer and all that stuff. So there's just like a lot more of that going on with four players. And it just feels a little bit more lively with just everybody's kind of got their fingers and all the different stuff. So definitely I prefer four player, but I could totally see it. If you're mainly like a two player gamer, take a look at it. I think, it, I think you'll, you'll like it and you'll enjoy it and you'll get a lot out of it. 
Um, in terms of the play time, gosh, I wouldn't say more than three hours. Obviously, it is going to depend on how much the people you've uh, play, are playing it with, how much they've played it, how much they kind of understand of it. And the player count's going to come into play. Two players are certainly going to go quicker than uh, four players. Uh, the, the four players, I mean, it's kind of like the same number of actions because you're just burning through the deck, although you're taking out a certain number of cards. So I think mathematically they're going to be kind of close, but the decision space and how much the board is going to change is going to be less with two players. So that's going to sort of cut down on your sort of, okay, let me reanalyze the board on my turn kind of stuff. Um, but I think once people have learned the game, it's going to get much closer to that two hour mark, even at the four player count. So that's about the ballpark in terms of the play time. Now, the other sort of third pillar of my reviews is what is it like? And it's like a lot of Euros, sort of, but it's also not like a lot of euros. Uh, so you have the card driven thing, which you see some of. I mean, you got like London, it's not really the same as London, which is another Martin Wallace game. Uh, gosh, you, there's some other euros that, that use cards. So like uh, Lewis and Clark, which is an older game that's kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, different little games, you, you, you're doing sort of very kind of efficient action, you know, parsing things where you're trying to, you know, find these like path to victory and points and efficiency of scoring income and all that kind of stuff right the whole euro thing but nothing really compares to brass now this age of industry which is basically uh, please don't like get into pedantic argument with me on the youtube or whatever but it's basically the same game as brass i know there's like people that like like age of industry more versus brass and then they want to argue about the math but uh that doesn't concern me um Age, I used to be an agent industry guy, actually. I liked agent industry more than brass because, only simply because, it's a little bit more streamlined, sort of, and you had different maps that you could play it on, and that was cool. So but that's one of the things this has that the old brass didn't have. It was kind of, uh, you know, it, the other one, you can kind of like get into it and play it and just figure it out and it's kind of have like you sort of get into a, almost like a rut with your strategy. Whereas Age of Industry, you had different uh, sort of technologies and stuff like that. You could go and play the same system. And the cards weren't like named for locations. The cards were sort of color coded for different areas of locations on the board. So that was cool. So you could reuse the same cards and everything and play on different maps. Now this is cool because, uh, especially with the Birmingham one, the Lancashire one has two maps on both sides. The uh, Birmingham one has those kind of juggled uh, shipping locations. So that's gonna really kind of change things up. And there's so many like industries um, that are in there that you can kind of get behind and sort of focus on one industry versus another. I think the replayability and stuff is gonna be much higher with Birmingham. And that's not to say like original brass wasn't replayable. It definitely was. It's just that, you know, it, the experience was kind of the same. I, it would take you several plays to get to the point where it was less replayable. And that's why it's a really good game. Uh, so that kind of didn't really run out with Age of Industry. You could, you could just throw a new map and play the South Africa map and then play that like 10 times. And then switch it back and forth. But yeah, so getting back to my point of you know, what's a game like this? There's not really a game like this. And it, you look like, you know, somebody says the other day when we were playing, they're like, oh, Brass is like a pick up and delivery game. And it's like, well, yeah, but not really. It's not like Steam or some train game or something like that where you're picking up goods and delivering and shipping it. It, it has that. I mean, you can play a card and ship your industry and you go through the stuff, but the whole like supporting industry idea of, I build iron and because the iron market's depleted, all the iron sucks out to sea and I sell it right away. Or there's a bunch of iron on the board, so now players start to build stuff that can eat the iron up and it sort of, you know, it subsists, it helps their industry further along. So that sort of, sort of like a cooperative kind of thing where play, you feel like you're playing there in the same world with the other players and their actions really do kind of matter and sort of the state of the economy, the supply and demand of iron and coal, and just the general sort of activity in each of those kind of in industries is, you know, informing all the other different industries. And like, oh, well, this is kind of happening here. So maybe what I can do is I can open up a brewery here. And, you know, there's, there's an industry here. There's a little sort of cottage 
niche that I can get into. So that feels very much more uh, realistic and more business. You feel kind of feel like you're, you have business savvy when you're doing that. Um, versus like parsing out kind of spatial math of this is three spaces away and this is four spaces away. So I'm going to do this and run, run my cube through this. You, you don't really have too much of that kind of abstract spatial stuff that's going on. It's more of an abstract of supply and demand and that kind of thing. Now there's still like proximity and stuff and you want to be in, in the network, but it gets less sort of county um, here. And it, 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 frankly, that's what adds to the theme of it. And so kind of getting into that aspect of it and why this game is so enjoyable and this kind of series of games, the original Brass Age Industry and now these are sort of, I think, like the pinnacle. And I hope they do come out with more maps and things or, or, or something like that, uh, or at least new versions of the game. Uh, it's very thematic. And it has a lot of like implications sort of towards like the industrial era and sort of that sort of new stage capitalism kind of vibe, right? Because you have capitalism sort of is a theory and a concept on paper, and then you have capitalism like in practice, right? And so capitalism and like industrialized capitalism, like the machine of capitalism, is really what this game is sort of about. Now, it's not really trying to make a, a sort of a judgment on it, but you can sort of see the uh, so the manipulative side of it, which I think is interesting because and it's really apparent, I think, because you added more industries in Birmingham is you have, again, you have like the iron and the, and the coal and that whole thing, just like in Lancashire. And then you have the other sort of supporting shipping industries that are like, hey, there's shipping now. There's trains that I can get stuff further away. I don't have to just sell locally. I can get it out there. And so those become active because of those new industrial technologies and you kind of see those spring up and all the kind of, you know, leveling up of the technologies. But re really kind of brings it home with Birmingham is the whole brewery concept and the beer. And we're like, okay, because you don't ever actually like ship the beer, but you need it to kind of piggyback on your shipments and stuff. And there's some other things that, you know, will use up the beer. Uh, if you want to do a double rail build, which I didn't, didn't mention because I didn't get into every, every detail. But later in the game, you can discard a card and build not just one rail, but two rails. But you also need beer for that. And then it, maybe this is me reading, up, reading into it a little bit. But when I floated this concept with my game group, nobody said I was a dummy. <laughs> but I'll leave that to you to say. <laughs> so no, please don't. But um, so what the breweries, you know, sort of symbolized for me is, okay, you've got sort of the big conglomerate corporation running coal and iron. And, and, and you're, you're like this big rich dude and you're into all these industries. And then when your workers are done and they go home, they buy beer at, guess what, your pub. <laughs> so they will work for you, you will pay them, and then they will give you the money right back as they go and shop at your grocery store or buy beer at your pub. And I was like, oh, this is a tricky little thing they put in here. And I really like that because that's sort of the insidious snowball of, you know, runaway, industrialized, mechanized, Capitalism, which doesn't have to be insidious, but it can be. So certainly I like that aspect of the game that it sort of, sort of kind of glances a brush across that. And uh, yeah, so that's a really neat kind of thematic thing. Um, it just kind of, this, this, it's like that extra little layer of that coat of stuff because the whole like, the whole thing of like building the, the, the coal and the iron stuff, I, I'm, you don't really see that in a lot of, you know, Euro games, I'm sure like in the train games, you can, you sort of get that. You, you kind of, you sort of hint at that. But that whole, like, I build this industry to do this industry. So many times now, Euro games are very much like, I take this, I build this and convert that into that and convert that into that, convert that into that. And then I get the victory points and I build my little engine of deck building or whatever. And that's fine. I enjoy some of those games. Uh, this is different. This is, you're reliant on other players. You're very much bouncing off the other industries and trying to find your little niche. And I think that's really cool because that's a lot of what business is really about is sort of finding that little hole and then exploiting it uh, for a profit. And that's what, that's really all business ever really is because you can do things for fun and for spiritual pleasure and all that stuff. But as soon as you like, you turn that crank up a little bit, 
then you can find those little things and bounce stuff off and then uh, theoretically uh, make yourself rich. Um, so this, the brass Birmingham really excels at that and it really excels at making itself uh, replayable and the different things like I said about the different player counts and all that stuff. So I think it's a fantastic uh, game. I definitely prefer Brass Birmingham over Lancashire at this point for kind of the stuff I just talked about. However, I would say for a new player, and this would go for me, if I was me and all of my little brain faults and functions that I have, if I was coming at these fresh, Birmingham for me for sure would be super overwhelming. If I had not played Brass and Agent Industry a bunch, then jumping right into Birmingham that would be crazy. I mean, I think I think I could do it. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. I don't know. Tell me. I've already talked for like 10 minutes. Have I made myself sound dumb enough that I couldn't do it? I don't know. But it would be rough. So I would say if you're getting into like, you know, new gamers or whatever uh, that don't play like a lot of heavy games, Lancashire definitely is a great first step. Lancashire is still a great game. I'm going to keep both of them, mostly because I can fit all of the stuff back in the one box. <laughs> Um, if I couldn't do that, then it would be a tougher choice, but I'm keeping both. Uh, but definitely if you put the two in front of me, I'm going to jump at Birmingham and at least for the time being, now it's still kind of new and fresh. I only played it a couple times. Um, but to me, it's just got lots of different layers. I'm going to have all of those different avenues that I can explore for victory and all that kind of stuff. And there's just going to be, a, I know, like a lot of cool little moments of interaction and things, uh, that, uh, are going to be fun. So Definitely recommend both games. If you're like, never played Brass, get like a sure and, and go for that one. And then maybe, you know, use that as a stepping stone to Birmingham because it's definitely uh, more complex. Now, once you've played Lancashire, if you, once you jump to Birmingham, you might have the thought of like, Soul said it was a lot more complex, but it's not because, but that's because I think, you know, theoretically the straw person, you've already played Lancashire. So Birmingham, just that extra little bit of stuff to kind of gobble up and then fill out those blanks kind of thing. So anyway, so that's both brasses. Uh, definitely high recommend. If this is anywhere close to your alley, you like economic stuff, Euros, heavy games, um, that kind of stuff, definitely look at it. And if you kind of shy away from heavy games a little bit, I think Lancashire probably is a good thing. Uh, you know, the rules are are pretty straightforward, I think. Now, I already kind of knew it going in, but I would uh, I would maybe take a chance because you can, you can play it two, three, or four player now. So that's it. Thanks.